This episode of Storyline is brought to you by... Today on Storyline, forces of antagonism, lessons from the trench, and some outtakes. But first, you know what's coming. Roll film! Oh my goodness! I am so sorry. They told me to come right in, and it's I... It's not a big deal. Not a big deal. Um, can I help you? Uh, yes. I am looking for Mr... David Pierce? Yes! Reggie Collins sent me. Sarah Oliver. Yes, hey. Um, is this a bad time? No, 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 no. I was expecting you. Um, why don't you come on in? Okay. Are you bleeding? No, 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 no. I'm fine. Excited? A little. Let's, uh, let's get started, Miss Oliver. You can call me Sarah. I don't plan on being called Miss Oliver until stardom gets to my head. Well, we plan to get you there as soon as possible. Let's dive in. So first on the record, we have Creeper, then two of mine, Miscellaneous Reason, another one of mine, Like It Matters, three of mine, and then three of yours. We're just not sure which three yet. I've already written two since they signed me. All right, well, good initiative. Okay, don't go crazy. <laughs> have you already written yours yet? Written and recorded. Oh. We just need your vocals. Wow, can I hear them? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Uh, actually, why don't you check out the lyrics while I get this set up. This is going to be your first single, so track three, obviously. This is just a scratch track. It's something I wrote a couple years ago, but I think it's going to be a perfect debut song. This doesn't make any sense. It's a debut song. This is your debut. But it's crap. It's not crap, trust me. My head spins when I think of you. Your voice wakes me from my daydreams. Listen, Sarah, you need to understand something. You were signed for two reasons, for your talent and for your looks. Not because of where you are, but for where Galactic Records can take you. Now we're gonna keep some of your more angsty songs so that guys can say they like you and not feel too weird about it. But who do you think is actually going to buy this record? Tweens. But I hate tweens. Tweens equal money, sweetheart. You may think it's crap, but it's the crap that's going to launch your career. Now after that, and you're established, you can do whatever you want. But until then, Galactic Records would like a return on their investment, and quite frankly, your songwriting isn't good enough to get us there. We'll just email you the rest of the songs. We need you to be ready to record by Thursday. And your PR department is going to give you a call. We've got to work on your look. Definitely time for lunch. Welcome to Storyline, the show where you get to laugh at three aspiring filmmakers learning how not to make a feature-length film. I'm your host, Ben Howe, and I was going to go into Taji Station to pick up some power converters. You no, know, you can waste time with your friends when your chores are done. Thank you, James. I appreciate that. <laughs> Today we're talking about what could arguably be called the most important component of a screenplay, the antagonist or more appropriately, the forces of antagonism. Without a believable and strong antagonistic force, the movie falls flat. If it's weak, the audience won't care about seeing the ending because the antagonist winning doesn't seem like that bad of an alternative. So what is antagonism? The basic structure of every story is that there's this person, your protagonist, who wants something and they can't get it, antagonism. Forces of antagonism must be obvious, otherwise you end up with a slice of life flick that just follows someone around and it's pretty dull. Now, antagonism is easiest to make big in an action movie or a thriller because there's always this person who wants to keep living, and then there's this person who wants them dead. The audience empathizes because they want to keep living too. Now, unless they want your character to die, in which case a rewrite might be necessary. Let's also make one important distinction between an antagonist and a villain. A villain is always an antagonist, but an antagonist isn't always a villain. Darth Vader is a villain. Boba Fett is a villain. But what about movies where the antagonist isn't actually a villain? The best example I could think of for this is The Fugitive. Sam Gerard is not a bad guy. He's a really good guy. 
The audience loves him, but he is Richard Kimball's biggest opposing force. Kimball wants to not be taken in so he can clear his name. Gerard's goal is in direct conflict with Kimball's goal. Bring him in so he can be brought to justice. The real villain goes mostly unseen throughout the entire movie. No, it wasn't me. It was the one-armed man. Now, if you're reading or writing a script and it's boring or the end isn't satisfying, odds are it's because the forces of antagonism aren't big enough. We actually ran into this problem while we were creating our story. The forces of antagonism just weren't strong enough, and then we realized David had to be a lot more villainous. I still have trouble thinking of him as a villain. In the story, he's the character with whom I most identify, but we have to cut the forces of antagonism loose and give our protagonist something big to war against. Once we cut him loose, our story got way more interesting. And now it's time for Storyline Quote of the Week. A protagonist and his story can only be as intellectually fascinating and emotionally compelling as the forces of antagonism make them. What will cause a protagonist to become fully realized, multidimensional, and deeply empathetic character? What will bring a dead screenplay to life? The answer to both questions lies in the negative side of the story. The more powerful and complex the forces of antagonism opposing the character, the more completely realized character and story must become. Let's take a quick break to thank our sponsor. This episode of Storyline is brought to you by TJ Mercer. TJ Mercer, kindest, bravest, warmest, most wonderful human being I've ever known in my life. Hello, I'm James Legg, and I'm popping in again to talk oh, about... Oh, jeez, really? Dude, comedy comes in threes. I still got one more time. We're going to talk about editing today and how it relates to writing and story. When you think about it, most movies are written by four departments, writing, casting, directing, and editing. These four departments have huge opportunity and power to redefine the story and its aesthetic value. Much of the craft of editing is mechanically putting pieces of film together, cutting off film slates, and assembling dialogue scenes, sure, but that's not all it is. A film editor also has to have a sense of rhythm and pace, discernment for the best performance, and a cohesive view of the story and its beats. One of the editor's greatest powers is their ability to alter performances. In Gladiator, Joaquin Phoenix has a super intense scene with the other lady, girl, person. His sister? Yeah, but that's awkward. I don't like to talk about that. Anyways, and he has this line that he repeats. Am I not merciful? Am I not merciful? You know that scene. Allegedly, the script only had it once, but they shot it with several different performances from walking, you know, some whispering, some yelling, you know, just to experiment with it. Then in post, the editor saw the different versions of the take and took a whispering one and a yelling one and put them together, added a quick cutaway, and totally transformed the scene. That's all I have to say. Okay, it didn't hurt at all. What did you do? What happened? She closed it on her hand. closed her hand in the door. <laughs> like, like, I looked up and saw this horrifying... Hey, Stephanie, do you need to stop double to close the door for you? Yes. I don't have insurance on us, Stephanie. <laughs> on that note, we need to get them to sign okay. our release. Yeah, we need... Uh, same number again. I'm sorry, Hamie. I'll have to call you back. Okay. <laughs> what did I say? I'm call you back. What did I say? Sorry. Sorry. They love us. They love us. You. The thing's gone viral. Y yes, listen. Morgan's gone. Morgan's. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> the camera, eyes on the road! 
do it. Camera loves oh right, <laughs> driving. <laughs> yes, that we is. We really are driving, in case you can't tell. Internet. Yeah, life is a three-ring circus of the clouds and freezing camels and such. Oh, you gotta give it up. Let us take a moment now to bow our heads and pray. That was nice. That was nice. Okay, even worse. Cut. Luke was totally. Hey, they said come right in. I am so sorry. Well, you should be. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, I forgot to do the focus. Okay, now. <laughs> sorry, it's moving the shot. <laughs> Alright, I'm ready now. I am so sorry. Are you alright? It's it's alright. It's no big deal. Oh, so. goodness. Are we married? <laughs> I'm supposed to be doing so. Sounds great. No, that was perfect. Uh, I, I love. <laughs> Let me just type on this thing. Here. Uh, who's? <laughs> uh, looking at your mind, like I said before, looking at your I just want to. I'm gonna reach out and pull his pin out from the sky. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. Miss Oliver. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, Miss Oliver. <laughs> <laughs> I need to tell you something. <laughs> you should not look that way. Uh, okay. You should look right there. Right there? No, right there. There. Uh, Wait. It's the banana. <laughs> <No. laughs> yeah, we don't want that. I call it scene three because it's, it's, oh, yeah, it's, it's episode three. That's what it is. It's episode three, roll two, scene what do you want to call it? Scene two? Three, I think, because there's in and out of the car. I made it. Oh, well, they're all in the car, so scene two. Later, Mayor Morris. <laughs> Alright. Oh gosh, I can't even see the number! <laughs> wow. Dad, no, that's too far. Where did we lose you? Well, that's a good spot. It's out of focus. Okay. Too long. I think the internet went out. Right there. Down. <laughs> Don't, with your eyes, not your head. <laughs> Mom! <laughs> Turn on the router again. <laughs> David. Sorry. Um, so, all of them? Like, everybody? Well, you know. Let the line. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> now we're really going. Uh, yeah, I'm we're at, uh, yeah, Morgan usually. Are you bleeding? Yeah, like hell. <laughs> so that's it for today. Remember, you can watch the movie all by itself without interruptions by annoying hosts if you go to our Vimeo channel. The link for that is in the show notes. Send us an email. You can do so at storylinepodcast at gmail.com. We're also on Facebook and we're on Twitter. Uh, or you could just subscribe to our YouTube channel and get all the storyline goodness that way. Stay tuned to the next episode when we'll get to see Ellen again and dig a little bit deeper into her character. See you next time. Videos. That just help the scene really flow better. You gotta. Yeah. <laughs> A film editor also has to have. Also has to have. So has to have. So have to One more time. And a cool Yeah, this is the one I was gonna improv. We'll see. You.